I founded Solaris United the day an old woman had her pet taken from her. The day my best friend watched her arms be given to someone else. The day my mother lost her head. I founded Solaris United the day I sold my heart to buy a gun. Biz just appeared one day, taught us how to fight economically, intelligently. <sighs> Sparky, you should have seen us. Fireballing refineries by night, dutiful cleanup crew during the day. My job was to get people believing in us, believing we could change things. That got more people killed than anything Zood and her sisters could have hoped to make. It's... it was a small operation. One we... one we almost didn't run. That's... what keeps me up at night. Deck 12. Everyone I knew. Everyone who believed in us. Everyone I convinced to sign on died. Parents, lovers, whole families, suit sisters, legs as folks, all gone. Except us, and a few others. Me, Biz, Zood, Little Duck. I washed my hands of it. They were bloody enough. Then, years later, Biz showed up again. And then you. And then, somehow, here we are. This isn't the first Solaris United. It's the second. And, one way or another, the last. I have no truck with the corpus. The greatest damage done by Avarice for the sake of Avarice is precisely that it without remorse or relent, demonstrates the easy sale of men and women who lend their bodies, their intellects, their voice to ends in which they themselves do not believe. The Temple of Profit is an ideology that teaches one thing only, that all creations of the mind, words, images, and ideas are meaningless. And that is how you keep people beaten. By starving them not only of models of something better, but draining them of wholesome inspiration, denying them examples of a higher way of being, and sapping them of any belief that they can achieve it. To be blunt, to hell with the corpus! Although, although, there was one corpus, a singular man, for whom I make a singular exception. His name was Sigal Sava. I was a younger man then, an assistant to the efforts of morphology specialist Sigal Sava. Though, I don't think he ever knew my name. Morphology specialist Sava's job was to catalogue and assess whatever life forms, dead or alive, were uncovered as Venus sprang back to life. That man sacrificed everything, career, future, perhaps even his life, to save a covert if you can believe that. I know, because I helped him. No, he never knew that either. The covert, specimen VK-7, had been tracked to her lair and was to be destroyed. Sigor prevented that at the cost of his liberty and was soon to lose his life. Coward that I was, I told myself there was nothing I could do. Then, she was there. V. 
K7. In front of my hab, waiting, looking at me with more intelligence than any covert should have. And she dropped keys at my feet. The keys to the security center. It was I who opened the door to Seagull's cell, who watched as VK-7 dispatched Seagull's would-be executioner, a corpus I had often worked with in Reclamation 3. It was I who ensured one cargo pod in particular was replotted to intercept an outbound Solaris rail tractor. It was I who sealed multiple bulkheads to stem the flow of troopers, meaning to end them both. Why did I do it? Hmm. I remember Seagull best this way. He puts down an instrument, respects me enough to look me in the eye, and he tells me, Every living thing longs to be whole. Every living thing yearns to defy death. If from death you returned, yet the part you loved best did not, what then? That was the last thing he ever said to me. That is why I helped him. In saving that animal, Seagull Sava had saved himself. How many of us can say that? I was not about to stand by and let the corpus steal from him the one thing that was truly his. To a flaming hell with a bloody corpus. Cetus is where Seagull went. The plains. His story is out there if you want to hear it. To this day, I hope he is, too. So, I ain't got no fam. Biological or logical. Mumsy and Dadsy got burned up working for Solaris United the first time. Figured I'd be a vent kid. But then the temple came looking to collect on what I took from them and left me barely ahead. So, really, things can only get better from there. Can't be a vent kid or mow it up. Don't fit. Can't crawl, can't board. So I make my logical fam right here in me shop. You can see the resemblance. Runs in the family. Would have been a vent kid though, for sure. Mr. The Business has been really good to me since, since my accident. Always coming out with something. I tell him he doesn't have to, but he says to me, in revolution, it is the weakest who sacrifice the most. You've done your part that I might do mine. And then he hands me a nutrient canister, or a pot I can use. It's nice and all, but why does he look so sad about it? Mr. The Business got me thinking. Me and my mowers, we're tight. I need it, they do it. If Neff does try muscling the Solaris out with his mowers again, I might just replace his with some of my own. Get inside his head? Check. I mean, I'd rather be getting my music to the people, but who says I can't also be a beautiful spider at the center of a big old web of subterfuge and intrigue? I was hanging in my rack the other cycle, about to power down, and I hear Boone and Roki in the venters banging skeg on the pipes and ducks. They had a good bounce going, so I stopped singing, as I do, got a little loud, and the skeg stops. I get all quiet-like. Oh, really stepped in it, thinks me. Then, the grill pops. Boone's got his head in me ab, saying, Hey, keep it going. Oh, didn't sleep much that night. Neighbors neither. Then, kid, yeah, that's me. In this life, a person has to find that which is more important than themselves. The Orb Vallis died a long time ago. It should not exist, but here it is. It has a second chance. If that's not hope, then what is? I respect anything 
that fights its way back from death. A sculptor sees the shape within the rock. Their skill lies in removing anything that is not that shape, delivering something beautiful and lasting into the world. I was a sculptor of sorts, modest. My task was the considered removal of those who obscured the shape of what we wanted to be. With their deletion, a just society came into clearer focus. Small actions lead to powerful outcomes. One example, a young man is repoed, and Utico resurrects the resistance. Why is conservation is all about understanding patterns, cause and effect. When orchestrating change in an ecosystem, ask, how will the system reconfigure in response to the new species? New forests? Redirected rivers? Diverse and beneficial new breeds? It is all connected. It was Legs' punishment that inspired you to go to resurrect Solaris United. Lean and wise. It's time for that hungry, furious wolf to enter the woods. For the corpus to receive a selective and beneficial extinction. A small price to pay. A young man's body. An old man's soul. Chatter wakes me, tells me a woman is at my lock, asking for water. Her carapace is scorched, her raiment's burnt. I fetch water. When I return, there are five more women, all singed. They say they are from deck 12. There is no deck 12. I am certain I've seen those faces before. I fetch more water. I return. They are gone. I return to my rack feeling. I return to my rack angry at the inconvenience is what I do. The gentleman business visited with me. Inconvenient. Why? Why so much talk when there is so much to do? A gentleman business communicated the belief that such nonsense that I must make peace with what happened on deck 12 deck 12 deck 12 what is this deck 12 chatter and stop speaking entirely then it's all right that you weren't there Zood that's what your visitors wanted you to know that fire was not for you Ugh! enough Nonsense and stupidity and a waste of my time. So many visitors. Every one of them hoping to take something away. Dealing with them is like an uncomfortable dream. While speaking with chatter is like being shaken awake. Are they real? How real are you when you're sleeping? How real are you floating? dreaming you are somewhere else that's what chatter wants to know how did the women at my lock know my name quills wanted me selling arms to the tenno back in fortuna not bloody lightly quills shady side mouth double talking ambidexter filling muckers never trust anyone who don't speak plain Told them, thanks, but op it. I had a previous commitment. Contract to extract a corpus deflector. Name of Jub Lot. Quill smiled that smile. The smile I hate the most. The smile of a body who thinks he's two steps ahead. The more I think about it, the more I know he was. Pratu. That was his name? Quill Pratu, secondary sard. Today? I didn't know you were coming today! That's how hostile extractions typically work, Jub. Unless you'd like to pencil me in for 2.30 next week. Maybe copy in your supervisor and half the security team. <laughs> what is their problem? I mean, all my photos are still in my office. You know, the whole reason you're doing this. What far 
files. I wasn't told about any files. That's because I didn't tell them. Tell who? Tell who, Job? The quills, all right? The quills. And that's when it all made a cruddy kind of mucking sense. I'd been set up. It was hairy, but I managed to get us behind a sealed bulkhead and into Lot's office. They don't fight like this for mid-level pencil necks. Who are you? Job, Lot, secondary, sub, architect of Nathaniel's Venusian restoration. I have information. And then he said it. Or Solaris United. And then he got killed. So, Solaris United was on its feet again. I've got friends in Fortuna. The first time SU tried to knock the crown off Nev's head, it almost got every last one of them killed. Some of them, it did. Biz once told me how he survives atrocity. If there's a fire on Deck 12, you seal off Deck 12. You don't go in. That's how you burn up. You wait till the fire's starved of oxygen. That's when you go in, assess the damage, and clean up. I can't seal off Deck 12. Deck 12 is where I live. What information? Tell me, now! Neff, Valis. Or mothers. It's been developed. What? What's been developed? Shielding. Satellites. The or mothers cannot be. Job. What? The Orb Mothers cannot be what? Job! Biz saved me from a life of swabbing latrines on Phobos. He made me what I am. But only because I left before I became what he was. Now, now I had to go back. Everything Job knew, Biz had to know. Yudi had to know. I and everyone in Fortuna could be proper beached if I didn't. Pencil necks like Jab don't risk their hide unless they mean it. Whatever Neff was doing with those old mothers would be a hammer on the head of SU. I had to go back. If I didn't, if something happened to Fortuna, I'd never sleep proper again. So, no more treasure hunting for LD. No more rescues? back to where it all happened. And I hope that this time it wasn't burning. And me, along with it. it. Used to be every time an old love ended and a new one began, friends would say, you seem so much happier now. And I'd smile and I'd agree. And then I'd go back to my hub and say your name just to feel it on my lips again like summoning a ghost <sighs> we met in unspoken agreement you called me by the name of the one who'd hurt you my name for you was the name of the one who had wounded me we played the part for each other when I spoke, I spoke for them. Through you, I told the one who had wounded me all the little things I never had a chance to. Cooked them all the meals I never got to share. Made all the jokes. Laughed all the laughs. With them through you, and you with yours through me. Then, one day, you called me by my own name and we never looked back. There's a dream I have every now and then. You are you in your own first body, and I am there in mine. I stand on the shore, 
You stand in the sea. I watch as the waves roll in, but never break against your back. They whisper right through you, then you fade away from me again. I still have your glove, just the one, the only thing I have left of you. In quiet moments, I lay it on my lap, lace my fingers through yours, and make promises. I promise that what happened to you would never happen to another. Promises I couldn't keep. I sold my arms to buy you an arm. I sold my legs to buy you a leg. I sold my lungs, my bones, my heart to buy a safe place to cradle your beautiful head. I bought you back from them. I bought you back to me. You in the body I had bought for you. Me in the body I had earned to replace the one I sold. But you weren't you. Not anymore. Sat so long on the tax man's shelf. You barely knew who you were. And you certainly didn't know me. The goodbyes I'd said decades earlier. They stuck. These days you work the canal with few memories of who you were. And I'm in the business of keeping promises.